a presentation about Wisconsin's assistive technology resources. This is Laura Plummer, Statewide Assistive Technology Program Coordinator. This presentation is brought to you by, WISTEC, by the WISTEC program housed within the Department of Health Services. So what is assistive technology? Let's begin with the federal definition, which states that assistive technology, AT for short, is any product or piece of equipment that is used to maintain or improve the functional capabilities of people with disabilities. These items may be commercially made products intended as assistive technology, common products that have been modified to serve an individual's need or custom made. They may be as simple as using a loop style drawer handle or as complex as a sip and puff switch to operate a personal computer. In addition to defining assistive technology, the federal definition also includes AT services. These include evaluation, funding, design, customization, modification, maintenance, repair, training, and technical assistance. Keeping in mind that people of all ages can benefit from services that help them with the AT that they use at home, in school, in the community, and at work. AT devices can cover all aspects of life, from daily living devices for the kitchen and bathing to devices for hearing, vision, and communication. It also includes wheelchairs, mobility devices, and vehicle modifications, as well as adaptive computer software, hardware, mobile technology, and recreational products. Next, there will be a few real life examples of AT devices being used. First, we have an image on the screen of a red and black signaling device, a motion detector, and a road ID bracelet. This is an example from a couple where the wife has dementia and the husband has a hearing loss. They no longer sleep in the same room and the husband was worried that his wife might wander off in the middle of the night. A motion sensor was set up in the bedroom for the wife. This sensor would send a signal to the signaling device in the husband's bedroom. The signaler would activate a bed shaker, and so he would be woken up if she got up in the middle of the night. The road ID bracelet was provided as a way to identify her with a name, address, and contact information should she become lost in the community. The second example is for a farmer who has vision loss. On the screen are images of a cartoon cow with a barcoded ear tag, marking tape, and a person using an electronic magnifier. The ear tag with a barcode can be scanned with a smartphone, and the marking tape was used to identify various farm products or medication. The electronic magnifier allowed him to read mail and complete paperwork. The third example includes AT solutions for hearing loss. Images on the screen include captioning services, a captioned telephone, streaming or assisted listening devices, signaling devices, a sign language interpreter, and various sizes of hearing aids. There is one national certification for AT providers, and it is the ATP, or Assistive Technology Professional. This certification is from RESNA, and there is a subspecialty for seating and mobility specialists. The ATP certification ensures that the provider is well-versed in disabilities, assessment protocols, AD products, and follows a code of ethics. This is a general certification and does not ensure that a provider knows everything about all types of AT. For example, I hold the ATP for certification, but my background is in the area of sensory disabilities. I would not be qualified or comfortable doing a seating and mobility assessment. My ethical code would require me to refer that to another provider. Provider of AT services may have various titles, and that can include adaptive technology specialists, independent living specialists, assistive technology professionals, um, and rehabil rehabilitation engineers, to name a few. The next slide is an overview listing of the AT resources this presentation will go over. The 21st century 
Assisted Technology Act was originally passed in 1991 and was reauthorized in December of 2022. This is a federally funded program available in each state and territory with the purpose of providing information and access to AT devices and services. These programs are funded by the Administration for Community Living at the federal level. Links on this page are to the Administration for Community Living and to the AT3 Center, which is funded to provide technical support to all AT Act programs. Also shown is the logo and link to WISTEC, Wisconsin's AT program, which was established in 1991. WISTEC is housed within the Department of Health Services. The image on this screen shows a flowchart accessing to accessing AT devices and services. It begins with providing public awareness to increase knowledge. From there, consumers can access device demonstrations and loans. Acquisition of devices and services can occur through information and assistance, as well as alternative financing. The end cycle is device reuse or refurbishment when something is no longer needed by the individual. Wisconsin begins with the Statewide Assistive Technology Advisory Council. This is a requirement of the AT Act, and the council meets on a quarterly basis to guide the program services, budget, and outcomes. The AT Council is composed of at least 51% of people with disabilities who use AT or their family members. There are, re are required representatives from vocational rehabilitation, education, independent living, blind services, and workforce resource. The recent reauthorization of the AT Act adds representation from the WIS loan program and someone from a specific list of agencies. There is a link to the website for the AT Council on this slide. The AT Council develops the state plan for assistive technology, which is updated every three years and can be submitted annually with updates. The plan outlines the budget and how the required programs or services are conducted. WISTEC activities are split between state level and state leadership, as described in the AT Act. State leadership activities including, include training or education, public awareness, and technical assistance. State level activities include device demonstrations, loans, information assistance, device reuse, and alternative financing. WISTEC activities are conducted both at the state level through Department of Health Services, DHS, and through subcontracts and partner collaboration. This slide has a listing of these and include each of the independent living centers, the Department of Corrections, UW-Madison, the ALS Association. Additional partners include AgriBility, as well as the TEP, CAP, and ICANN Connect programs. On this slide is a map of Wisconsin, which shows each of the regions for the independent living centers. Devices are available for demonstration, short-term loans, for sale items, and devices available for free are all available on the public facing website, Wisconsin AT for All. On this screen is a screenshot of what this website looks like and how it functions. Device reuse occurs in several ways. First, the Department of Corrections accepts used durable medical equipment and inmates are trained to refurbish the devices so that they are like new. These devices are then made available at a very reduced cost. WISTEC also has a hearing aid reuse program through UW-Madison for youth. Use devices through program partners or individuals are also listed on the Wisconsin AT for All website. One of the benefits of reuse is that it keeps devices out of landfills. Alternative financing is also part of the AT Act. The WIS loan and telework programs provide loan slash financing options for people with disabilities and their families. This financing is to help 
people acquire assistive technology devices, make home modifications, or accessible vehicle home modifications. The next partner to highlight is the Assistive Technology Lending Center, which provides short-term loans of higher-end AAC devices for schools. This program is funded by the Department of Public Instruction and is hosted by CISA II. AAC devices are alternative and augmentative communication devices. The next two programs highlighted are under the Department of Public Instruction, or DPI. This first is the Wisconsin Educational Services Program for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. This program supports students with hearing loss, educators, and families in the K through 12, K through 21 age range. The Wisconsin Council for the Blind and Visually Impaired supports students with vision loss, educators, and families in the K through 21 age range. The Wisconsin AAC Network is a group which provides support and information provider, providers of, for providers of alternative and alternative communication. This next slide contains images of the options for independent living model home for people with disabilities. The images include one from the outside of the building, which is their office facilities that were built to serve as a model home. The second is an undercut sink, and the third is of a side opening oven with a support tray, so someone in a wheelchair can take something from the oven and place it down immediately on a sur solid surface. This showcase home is located in Green Bay, and everyone is encouraged to set up a tour if they are in the area. The Aging and Disability Resource Centers, or ADRCs, are also a great resource for information about assistive technology. They each have been provided an AT kit and training on connecting people to assistive technology resources. The AT kits have a variety of types of equipment and are meant to generate awareness and conversations about AT. This is a map showing each of the ADRCs in Wisconsin. The next slides discuss telecommunications programs. The first are the I Can Connect and WDB TAP programs, which serves individuals who have a combined hearing and vision loss. WDB TAP serves those under the age of 18, and the I Can Connect serves those above that age. Individuals must meet financial qualifications and have their hearing and vision disabilities documented. The programs then can do assessments and provide the devices and training for distance communication. There are links to the websites to learn more. The Telecommunications Equipment Purchase Program, or TEP, is managed through the Public Service Commission and provides funding for specialized telecommunications equipment for people with disabilities. There is a link to the website to learn more. The Telecommunications Assistance Program, or TAP, is managed by the Office for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. This program can provide funding for those with a hearing loss who meet financial eligibility and who need assistance with the purchase of hearing aids, the TEP co-payment, or other, other specialized distance communication technology. The AgriBility program assists farmers with disabilities and their families to continue working and being involved in the agriculture industry. Information, resources, assistive technology, and training are a large part of the work that they do. The ALS Association of Wisconsin, part of the National ALS Association, is another resource for assistive technology in Wisconsin. Supporting individuals who have ALS and their families with information, resources, support, assistive and communication technology, and training is part of the work that they do. One additional resource can be what are called maker spaces. These are sites 
um, or individuals who have knowledge and skills to create customized or unique AT products and solutions. Maker spaces can be found at some universities, while others are more artisan or volunteer slash community based. This next slide contains a listing of many of the resource links shared in this presentation. Questions can be directed to Laura Flummer with the WISTEC program, phone 608-514-2513, or by email, laura.plummer1, the number one, at dhs.wisconsin.gov.